Welcome to my second video. For this video, I wanted to do a first impressions on this journal that I bought and came in the mail today. That's why it's still shrink wrapped and reflective and all of that great stuff. But I put a lot of research into what journal I wanted to purchase and I was looking for something that I could use to take notes for the books that I'm reading and for my Bible study. So for that purpose, I wanted to get a larger notebook and this is an A4 size. To show you a comparison, this is my bullet journal and it is an A5 size. And this is what most people use for bullet journaling, but I wanted something larger for this purpose. So as you can tell, the A4 is much larger. I landed on purchasing from the brand Dingbats because it had incredible reviews. The paperweight is a little bit thicker than my bullet journal, so I thought it would hold ink better. And I just really liked the way that this looked. So this is an eco-friendly brand, and this is specifically from their wildlife line, hence the deer or elk thing that's on the front. But to tell you a little bit about the book itself, this is an A4 size. It has 192 pages, which is 96 sheets. I did get the dotted grid style and the pages are perforated, which was another big selling point to me because most of my bullet journal stuff and in all of the reading that I did, there were very few pages or journals with pages that are perforated but still reviewed to be durable enough to not just come loose. So that was one of the things that drew me to this journal as well. So on the back it just talks about the life story of the company. His great great grandfather blah 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 established it. I don't think that information is necessarily important but you can see it's embossed on the back with the Dingbats brand logo. So now I'm going to open it, which I've been waiting to do all day, and I'm very excited about it. It's probably going to be hard to open, but we'll see. This is probably the sloppiest opening of a notebook ever to be published on YouTube, but that's okay. I like it much better without the reflection of the plastic wrap. Okay, so outside appearance, first impressions, and the feel. It feels really nice. The cover has kind of, it's textured, so it feels like it has kind of a grip to it and it feels like it's already going to be really durable. I like the way that the cover feels, basically. I just like it a lot. Um, it comes with an elastic, which a lot of people review to be really strong, so we'll see how that holds up, but as of right now, it just feels like a normal elastic. And it also comes with a pin loop that seems pretty sturdy as well. This was something that I was excited about because you don't see that on a ton of journals. I think the Scribbles That Matter has a pin loop as well, but usually you have to buy that as an addition and add it on, which is not something that I wanted to do. So let's open it up. This is quite a bit larger, so it's going to take up most of my desk here. But inside it has the print all the way across of the animal on the front, so the deer or the elk or whatever it is. And it has an area for you to write your information. Usually people write their name, number, whatever, so that it can be returned to them if it is lost. And it opens up next to blank pages and then right up into a spread. So even that first blank page is perforated. So off the bat, I noticed that the dots are a little bit darker than what I'm used to having in a bullet journal. So this is the look term, look term, whatever, 1917. And I think that the pages in the look, look term, look term, it's German. I don't know how to say that. But I think that they're a little bit lighter, which isn't necessarily bad news, just information to be aware of. So the dots are a little bit darker. Something I notice when I open this up right off the bat is that it lays flat, very flat, wherever it's at in the book. And that is a feature that is very important to me. Um, just in any notebook, even before I put research into what they were, that was an important feature. 
Next, we have a page marker. This only has one. A lot of journals like this have two, but I've never really used both of them at the same time, so one is just fine for me. As far as the material is concerned, it's silky, so it doesn't feel as sturdy as other bookmarkers like the Loic Term or even like the Artist Loft Michaels brand that I have, but I don't ever imagine being rough enough on this for it to fall out. So let's go look. Oh, and the pages are not numbered, which makes sense because they're perforated. So if I'm on page 200 and I rip it out and then page 200 is missing, then the page numbers don't mean as much anymore anyway. So I also don't imagine having to number these pages for the purpose that I'm using this book for. So looking at the back, it's the same setup as the front with the print and it has a big pocket here, which I really appreciate. So, see what this is. I guess this just shows you all of their other notebooks. So we've got the Wildlife Collection, which this is from. More Wildlife Collection, but that's a different type of notebook. Those words are way too small for me to read, so not going to be able to do that, but it does appear to be from the Wildlife Collection as well. We've got pocket size notebooks. So that's pretty cool because I didn't see all of those on Amazon. So that will be helpful if I want to buy something directly from them in the future. So next up, I'm going to do a pen test in this, which if you don't know what a pen test is, basically the thought is to test out all of your favorite pins at a page in the back to see how they ghost or bleed through. Ghosting is just going to show kind of a shadow. So if I write on this page with one pen and turn it over and there's a shadow of what I wrote, then it ghosted or bleeding, which is like most commonly thought of when you write with a Sharpie on a piece of copy paper, it's gonna bleed through, it can get on the table, things like that. So um, that's what a pin test will test as well as how I like the paper texture. So that is what I will do next. And after that, I will come back with my final thoughts. All right, here is the finalized pin test. I tried to keep it consistent throughout with what I did. Up top, we've got all of the fine liners that I typically use as well as my jelly roll pin. This is pretty much what I write with all the time right now. So I just did a single line, a zigzag line, the name of it as well as a filled in box of color just to see how the page would handle more ink. Then we get down into my highlighters, Crayola Super Tips, and brush markers. I did the single line again with a thick line, the name, and then I also did, here on the outer edges, a line that I went over three times. That's not something I typically do. I just wanted to see if the ink would hold well. I mean, if the paper would hold the ink well. On this Tombow Dual Brush Pen, the square, the page got a little bit roughed up. I don't know if you can see that super well, but the page looked like it didn't handle that square well, but that was the only one that it did that with. So looking at the back, you can definitely see ghosting, which I don't have a problem with because when you're using felt tip pens, unless you have a super thick paper, usually there's going to be a little bit of ghosting, so there's gonna be a shadow, but there's not really any bleed through. The only bleed through I see is this little dot here, um, which is from a Zebra Mild Liner, and that's from the line that I went over three times, which is not something I ever do with a highlighter. So I just wanted to get to, again, try that out for testing purposes, but I do wanna show you a comparison between a couple other notebooks here. This is the Loic Term 1917 that I use for my bullet journaling. And to me, this ghosting is much worse 
I can see the full distinct line. I can see all the words. Um, this paper is thinner by just a hair. Um, so the ghosting is a little bit worse there. And then this is the Artist Loft, which is the Michaels brand version of basically all of these notebooks. And you can see here, um, the ghosting isn't horrible on this, but it's not great either. So I think that this ghosting is perfectly acceptable. I think it'll work wonderfully for what I want to use it for. So to wrap this up and give my final first impressions, I really like this notebook. I think it's gonna work wonderfully for what I wanna use it for. I think that the pen loop is a really great addition that I will take full advantage of because I don't foresee myself sitting down every time I use this at my desk with all of my pens. So having just one pen accessible that I can use when I'm out with this is a great feature. I feel like this notebook feels sturdy, it feels durable, and it will last for a long time. The only thing that I will have to keep you guys updated about, other than how the paper works, is the perforated pages. I don't know if they will be weak and fall out over time, or if they will remain durable and stay in unless I wish it otherwise. So that is kind of my final first impressions on this notebook. I'm really excited to use it and I will show you guys me doing a couple things in it in the future so you can see how it works with actual hand lettering and note taking. So thank you for watching my video if you took the time to do so and I hope that this was helpful in picking out a bullet journal or just a journal of any kind.